WHP TV with Williamsport Translator. It's week two of the Tour de France, and the heat is on. It's anyone's race as Latour rolls into Bordeaux. And in the heat of battle, nerves are frayed and tempers flare. Wayne Thomas has also rolled into Bordeaux this week, and he brought with him from Detroit the WBC World Super Welterweight crown. And today, Thomas will defend his title against the punching power of challenger Lupe Aquino in a live 12-round bout coming up on CBS Sports Sunday. the look of Bordeaux, world-renowned for its great wines and the beautiful chateau where they are made. The American tourists are back this summer, enjoying the sights and tastes of La Belle France, and we are happy to be here to share some of those with you on this edition of CBS Sports Sunday. And it is wild here at the Marignac Sports Complex in Bordeaux. Bienvenue à Bordeaux, France. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Lyon here in a very noisy arena in Bordeaux, France. And we welcome you to the first of three CBS Sports Sundays we'll be bringing you from France. And the first of two championship bouts dedicated to the memory of the great French middleweight Marcel Serdin, himself a world champion, who more than 40 years ago died in a plane crash en route to a title bout in the United States. Today, though, two Americans have come to France for a world championship bout, but even a world title fight can't get in the way when it comes time to eat over here. It may not be everyone's idea of haute cuisine, but they'll get out the grills and come up with something suitable for the occasion. But boxing is not the only event in Bordeaux today. This was the scene near the finish line hours ago in downtown Bordeaux as the Tour de France ended its latest stage and capped off what has been an unpredictable and tumultuous week of racing. Our John Dockery and Phil Liggett will bring you up to date on the latest from the wide open Tour de France when Sports Sunday continues from Bordeaux, France, here on CBS. CBS Sports Sunday is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. What more could you want from a cereal? And by Kemper and the independent insurance agents who represent us. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the Tour de France. If you can't ride your bike on the road, carry it across a field. If your body can't take the strain, the tour will provide a ride. Tempers are as hot as the blistering heat. Even the bikes of steel are cracking under the pressure. All for a chance just to touch the immortal yellow jersey.
recycling machine System U with their high-tech attack is armed with a double-barrel assault with emerging star Charlie Motel. Also threatening is two-time tour champion Laurent Pignon. They have their own designs on the yellow jersey and a tour is still searching for a leader. to the Tour de France. This intersection of D94 and D32 here in Yers, France may seem insignificant to you folks, but it has a lot of meaning in this year's Tour de France because it's the only spot the riders will see more than once. When they come by two weeks from now, Paris and the coveted yellow jersey will only be about 20 miles away. But today when they come by, They'll still have 2,000 miles left on their journey, down through the wine country of Bordeaux, and then the perilous mountains, the Pyrenees and the Alps, and some of the toughest climbs on this planet. So before the glory of the Champs-Élysées, these riders will have to survive two weeks on their bicycles and a rigorous journey across France. A journey which began two weeks ago in Berlin, the most distant point ever for a tour start. In the center of the city, the tour began with the prologue time trial. A short sprint and the first chance for a rider to emerge from the pack. Of the stars, 27-year-old Stephen Roach would have the best time in this first of 26 races. The Irishman now living in Paris seems totally recovered from his knee surgery of last year. The tour would spend four days in Germany before large crowds, most of whom had never seen the great race before. And ironically, a Polish cyclist would lead the race in this divided land. Lexi Asecki wore the yellow jersey, which goes to the rider with the best overall time. Easily the biggest early test for Andy Hampton in 7-11 was a team time trial. Nine men against the clock, critical for a team leader like Hampton, because a team time is his time. Last year, Laurent Pignon and his System U machine destroyed the Americans. Not so last week, when System U only beat 7-11 by seconds and not minutes. The American team had passed their first test against their more experienced European rivals and had done it with high marks. From Berlin, a short flight over East German territory to Karlsruhe, West Germany, then on to Stuttgart. It was here that Charlie Mote broke away from the stars, leaving them far behind. But the real story was Stephen Roach's teammate, Eric Mackler. His pursuit of the yellow jersey here would later haunt the Carrera team. As Eric Mackler headed to the finish line, his pursuers were still out on the streets of Stuttgart among the thousands of cheering crowds. And when it was over, it was Eric Mackler, the first Swiss rider in 30 years to wear the Golden Fleece. It was one week ago today that the tour came home, crossing the border into France where it would stay for three weeks. From Strasbourg, the rolling caravan continued west through Champagne country and races we will highlight today. It passed just below Paris before turning south to Bordeaux and some of the finest vineyards in the world. Here the course is flat to heat and tense. Further south and finally to the Pyrenees in the first mountains. The Pyrenees, the natural border between France and Spain. And as if the Pyrenees weren't enough, the Alps come next with some of the toughest climbs ever in the 74 years of the Tour de France. Finally, it's north to Paris and the Champs-Élysées where the winner will wear the yellow jersey. After riding for almost a month and 2,524 miles in 26 days. 
and the question this year, with Greg LeMond still in California recovering from his hunting accident, who will replace last year's champion as the best rider in the world? Will it be America's best hope, Andy Hampston? He's already suffered a crash and is finding the tour tough from the very start. Race favorite Stephen Roach has been spending his final moments before races in an ambulance trying to relieve some stubborn muscle spasms. Laurent Fignon, winner of the Tour in 83 and 84, has been recovering from serious injury the last few years. He seems to be slowed down by a nagging cold. One has to wonder if a healthy upstart can seize the opportunity to win, and Charlie Motet may be just the man to do it. An unusually tough early test may give us some answers when we come back. That does it for today's adventure. If you're new here, please subscribe. Take it one step further, ring that notification bell. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big old like and a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. Ride on.